Noted for their unique black and white stripes, zebras are the symbol within the rare disease community. They serve as a reminder and an educational tool. After all, rare is more prevalent than you may think. There are over 7,000 rare diseases affecting approximately 300 million people worldwide and between 25 and 30 million Americans, or one in 10. It was nearly 30 years ago when Savannah Dixon Salazar was diagnosed. Let's take a look at Montel's interview with her mom, Tracy. We're joined today by Dr. Tracy Dixon Salazar, executive director of the Lennox Gestalt Syndrome Foundation. If she looks familiar, it's because this is her third time and her third appearance on Behind a Mystery, but this is the first time she's been here in studio. So it's so great to finally meet you and have you here. Thank you. It's yeah. great to be here. Yes, ma'am. For those who haven't seen you before, let's tell them a little bit about your background, about your story. Absolutely. Um, my daughter, Savannah, developed seizures at the age of two completely out of the blue. And then that evolved into lennox gastaut syndrome when she was five years old. And it really took us by surprise. And this is what really led me on a 12-year journey where I enrolled in college, got my bachelor's, and then got my PhD in neuroscience. Thank you. Absolutely. And I did a postdoc in neurogenetics. And I just, during this whole journey, I just wanted to be a part of the group of people that were helping to find answers. Um, but back at home, while I was going through this journey, Savannah was still having seizures, um, hundreds of seizures a day, too many to count. You know, uh, I never really expected this, but during the course of my research, we actually found a treatment when she was 18 years old. That really helped her and it dropped her seizures by a huge number. She's actually going to be 30 this year. Um, Congratulations. No one ever thought that she would live this long and it's just a, a, a miracle in many, many ways. And um, she's sassy and funny and has a great sense of humor. So now how long did you work with the LGS Foundation? I've been there now for uh, six years. I served as the Director of Research and Strategy for four years and I've been Executive Director now for two years. And what have you learned about LGS in the last, say, five years? It, the science has gone so fast in the last five years. We've learned so much. We, we used to think LGS was too complicated to study, but now we know that it's a disease that starts as one thing and turns into something else. It starts as seizures, and those seizures are happening when the brain is developing, and then it takes over brain development to create abnormal wiring. And once they have the abnormal wiring, which you can see on the EEG test, every kid with LGS has this abnormal wiring, they don't learn anymore. And this often leads then to an, um, severe intellectual disability when they become adults, if they live that long, because they're having so many horrible seizures. Um, they also develop sleep problems, behavioral problems, problems with memory, um, problems with feeding, problems with motor movements. It, it's really a, a very horrible disease that impacts these kids at the very beginning of their lives. And there is no cure, but your foundation is doing quite a bit to change that, right? We are, we're working really hard. The first thing we do is we bring families in and let them know they have a community of support. So we started our Finding the Cures Together program, and we start with our newly diagnosed families where we bring them in and let them know that nobody has to walk this journey alone. Nobody should walk it alone. And from there, um, we mobilize and educate our community. And then we bring in scientists and clinicians. And we recently hosted our patient-focused drug development meeting where we relay to scientists and the FDA what it's like living with this disease and how we would prioritize the issues we're having. And that's something only patients should be weighing in on. And then from there, um, we brought together uh, our patient research collaborative network where we work together with scientists to actually find the cures. And together, we're actually funding now our Learn From Every Patient database. Um, everyone in the space really has our data except us. So the government has it, the hospitals have it, the researchers have it. But we as the families don't have it. So we're working with our collaborative research network to form this Learn From Every Patient database. And this is what you call your patient-led research program, right? Exactly. And patient-led research is so important because it puts the patient at the center of research. There's certain things we as patient families should be weighing in on, and it's what it's like living with the disease, and what are the issues we're facing, and how we prioritize these issues. And in the past, it's really been the medical infrastructure. It's been doctors that have decided that for us. And it's been companies that are making therapies that have decided that for us. And treatments are made at us or for us instead of with us. And we don't want that anymore. Patient-led research puts the patient in an equal seat at the table with the doctors and the researchers so that we can advance things forward. And this is how we're going to make changes. And so if we want to change things, I think bringing the patient voice in is the only way we're going to do it. This being your third visit to Behind the Mysteries, what has that done for getting the word out to other patients and other families? It's actually been really incredible for our foundation. We've actually now had 66 families 
that have found us. Um, and these are only the ones that have come in through our channels and have actually checked the box to say that it was through the segment that they saw on TV. When I think about the things that keep me up at night, it's the families that are walking this journey alone. There was no LGS Foundation when we started this. And I remember the first time I, I met a mom and then I became supported and empowered and educated. And that really led me on my journey. And that's what we're trying to do now. And, and so the families that have found us, I mean, I, I, I can't put a number on how valuable that is, but they're not walking it alone anymore. And if people wanted to get more information, go ahead and give them the stats, let them know where to go. Absolutely, they can go to lgsfoundation.org and they can learn more about all the programs that we're working on. That's great. Well, look, thank you so much for being here and being in studio this time. Thank you. Absolutely, for sure. And of course, if you want more information, you can always go to our website, thebouncingact.com. When we come back, a foundation that honors its founder in a big way. But first, let's hear from the co-founder of Behind the Mystery. Every year, we get to highlight Rare Disease Day on Behind the Mystery. And what an honor to be able to really look at, listen to, and hear people that are dealing with rare diseases and celebrate them. 